Yet despite our greatest achievements, there remains one as yet unconquered final frontier, death and the life beyond. And it is this frontier that holds perhaps the true answer to all life's mysteries. But is this belief, this seemingly universal human instinct, merely the product of superstition and religious doctrines? Or is there actual scientific evidence to support it? Today, scholars and religious figures are certainly divided. Some talk of reincarnation, others of assimilation into the universal life force. Nobody knows for sure, or do they? Towards the end of the 20th century, a phenomena arose in which people reported near-death experiences, otherwise known as NDEs, in which they encountered some form of afterlife reality. Modern medicine began referring to these occurrences as the Lazarus phenomenon, after another biblical character, also named Lazarus, who was revived by Jesus four days after his supposed death. But just what is near-death experience? Dr. Jeff Long elaborates. Well, as the name near-death experience implies, these people have some event in which they are severely physically compromised. Generally, there is a severe physical malady that occurs very suddenly, often, or at the end of a chronic illness. Near-death experiences are very frequently associated with cessation of heart function or cessation of breathing function, and very often both. And given that 10 seconds after that, that the EEG, a measure of brain electrical activity, goes absolutely flat, it's medically inexplicable that near-death experiencers are having a conscious experience. There's so much more evidence behind something more going on with near-death experiences, something that is not medically explicable. There are blind people, including people that are blind from birth, that have near-death experiences, and for most of them, it's a visual experience. That is absolutely medically inexplicable. These are people that are blind that for the first experience in their life where they've had vision and can see things in the world was during their near-death experience. There is no other explanation for that. Time and time again, we hear accounts of people that had their near-death experience and their consciousness separates from their body. So from a vantage point of their consciousness apart from their body, they're able to see and hear what's going on around them while they're being resuscitated. Uh, very often they can see incredible detail of, this, of the events going on around them. Out of all the near-death experiencers that I've studied that had their consciousness come apart from their body and where they were seeing earthly everyday events, uh, essentially all of them, what they describe, has been absolutely plausible. And of all the near-death experiencers I've seen who actually went and sought out verification of what they saw while their consciousness was apart from the body, uh, every single time, with only one exception, what they saw was as, or heard was absolutely correct. And there is no explanation for that, for consciousness apart from the body at the time you're having a cardiopulmonary arrest. To people that think that near-death experience is not legitimate, I would remind them that there's at least 12 to 15 million Americans that have had near-death experience. This is such an enormous number of a shared experience that so greatly affects their life that no matter what the cause of near-death experience, no matter what your idea is about why it occurs, I think there's no question, given the number of lives that it's impacted, that it makes sense to study it. It's an incredible phenomenon, and again, the implications are enormous. A medical practitioner who has experienced this firsthand is Dr. Melvin Morse of Seattle's prestigious Children's Hospital. The near-death experience is, in fact, the dying experience. We will all have this experience when we die. The interpretation of the experience is in dispute. Nevertheless, it's a scientific fact, not a belief system, that we will have this experience when we die. There have been three major scientific studies of near-death experiences in the last 15 years. And all three of these studies document that these experiences are real and they'll happen to us all when we die. So the old ideas that these experiences are caused by a lack of oxygen to the brain or are hallucinations caused by chaos in the brain at the point of death are caused by the drugs that are given uh, to uh, patients uh, that we resuscitate uh, when we're dying. Those ideas um, 
were, of course, respectable scientific theories, but turned out to not be true. In fact, near-death experiences are the dying experience, and that's a scientific fact, not an opinion. I think, in terms, of, yes, certainly in terms of the consistency of the testimonies in near-death experiences, it suggests that the the experience is a reality which is not purely the product of brain chemicals because I mean, we know from studies of the effects of drugs ordinarily that if you give one person a drug and then give the same drug to another person they'll have two completely different experiences. There might be broad similarities but not the level of consistency you find with a near-death experience. Science cannot give us the definitive answers to our questions about the afterlife. Not yet. Until it can, our best source of information is the human experiences of those who have undergone death and seen the other side. Accounts like these have had an enormous impact worldwide, causing ripples even amongst the medical and scientific professions. In the past, such occurrences were viewed simply as hallucinations caused by hormones produced by the body during extreme trauma. But experts are not so convinced. Hallucinations tend to be very disordered experiences and they're nothing like the highly ordered and structured experience that you have with near-death experience. On my website, I specifically asked the question, was the experience dreamlike in any way? And I've actually recently done a formal study of that. Near-death experiencers are emphatic when asked directly, and I did, was the experience dreamlike in any way? The answer is a resounding no. It isn't close at all to a dream. Dreams tend to bounce around a little bit. They don't tend not to have order or structure. Uh, very often a dream will end without it reaching a logical conclusion in the sequence of events. Not so with near-death experiences. They're highly structured, highly ordered. They tend to have a very logical initial part of the experience. And at the end of a very orderly and structured experience, there's a very orderly and structure end, structured end of the experience. And that's when the experience ends. Near-death experiences are nothing like dreams. If you've had a frightening near-death experience like some of those that I've described, there is no question that when you have that experience, this forces you to look at yourself. This is something that really shakes up your life in a major way. You've really got to sit down with yourself and ask yourself, why did this happen? What's really going on here? Is this the reality? It really forces you to understand what is the reality of what's going to happen when I die. Dr. Richard Kent, a retired medical doctor, has studied the NDE over many years, traveling the world and writing books on the subject. Of the 300 case studies he has made, an alarming amount report the existence of a realm similar to the one encountered by Daniel Ekechukwu. It's just a horrendous, awful place. It's a place where people are terrified, are frightened, um, and people even just who've seen hell, even years later, they recall in horror of what they saw there. Just a place of awfulness. Um, I've interviewed probably over 300 people who've had these experiences, um, and all of them have been dramatically changed. Their lives have been changed by these near-death experiences. You can't say that about hallucinations. Hallucinations simply aren't life-changing experiences, whereas a near-death experience is... Um, when you meet Jesus Christ and either see heaven or hell, they are dramatic, riveting, life-changing experiences. And almost invariably, people's lives are dramatically altered as a result of these experiences. So personally, and also because of the fact that the near-death experience accounts are so are remarkably similar, not only to each other, but also to the Bible, I personally believe that these, these are real events and people are describing real events. If you read any newspaper today you'll talk about you'll, you'll read about people having a near-death experience of a type leaving their body and going along a tunnel and meet and going to a place of light it's only one who get the, those who get really close to who recognize jesus christ um, they describe him as nearly six foot tall but radiating li uh, light tremendous amount of light coming from him um, from his face and from his chest and from his arms and from his legs um, but people, it isn't just the appearance of Jesus, um, it's the fact that they feel it, it, in the presence of so much love. Um, many people said they've never felt, they've never felt like that. They've never felt so completely um, surrounded uh, by love, as powerful as that. It's just incredible love. 
Though scientific research has shed a lot of light onto the subject, it is only those who have experienced firsthand the reality of a life after death that can truly give us insight into what happens when we die. Like Ian McCormick, a native New Zealander, McCormick would undergo a life-changing experience as a result of his extraordinary encounter with death and the life beyond. Fact or fiction? You decide. And it happened to me 20, oh, 26 years ago. and it, Well, it changed my life then, but talking to all these people who have been to heaven and other people who have been to hell has had a huge impact on me. It's changed my life dramatically, and my wife. And, you know, we spent a lot of time abroad every year. But half the year we're traveling, just talking to people about, mainly about heaven and hell. And incidentally, it's, it's talking to people about hell that causes me to actually travel to many, many countries of the world. Because I, I think people should know there's a place to avoid. You know, to be honest, there were two thieves on the cross. One laughed at Jesus on the cross, and he's in hell now. The other one said a short prayer to Jesus on the cross, and he's in heaven now. Big difference, and it's forever. Perhaps most compelling of all, and the only true evidence, has been the actual real-life accounts. Stories like Daniel Ekechukwu's that we saw today and that of Ian McCormick have changed forever our perceptions of death and the life beyond. God? Demons? A kingdom of darkness? A kingdom of light? Fact or fiction? You decide. And whatever choice you make, based on what you've seen, one thing is very clear. What we do on earth really does echo throughout eternity. I'm Ron Bailey. Thank you for watching The Lazarus Phenomenon.